from KSAT 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Hi, good morning. Happy Friday. We made it to Friday. It is August 9th. And well, before we get to weather and traffic, we're going to want to start with our top story that we've been covering this morning. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the Bernie Little League team earning the right to represent the Southwest region and the Little League World Series. They've already won because they've already gotten here. Um, so now it's just go relax, have fun and compete. You know, you give them courage. Father, I pray that they have the time of their life on this trip. Father, I pray that they play with all their hearts. Yes, I love seeing that. Very cool. It is an exciting morning for the Bernie Little League baseball team. The kids are on their way to the Little League World Series in Pennsylvania. A Devin Carp was there with them this morning as they made their way through the San Antonio International Airport. The Bernie League Little League team got here to the airport at about 5 a.m. and you could not tell how early it was by their attitudes. These kids told me they are excited, confident, and ready to represent Bernie on the national stage. Now these kids are going to be heading to Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Before, they're going to have some time to practice, take in the sights, and maybe even try to rest up before their big first game next week. Now last night, Bernie got in one final workout to prepare for their competition. The team's World Series title aspiration stayed alive thanks to that 6-3 win over Louisiana on Tuesday, where Doc Mogford hit that game-winning grand slam. And to say the past few days have been a whirlwind for the entire team is an understatement. Oh, they've worked so hard. A lot of these boys have been playing baseball since four and five years old with that dream to one day possibly do this, and it's here, you know. And you know, kind of saw that in that last game They um, with a little adversity and just kind of remind them how hard they worked and they were ready for those moments. So yeah. it was really exciting when they turned it around, and now we're going to Williamsport. We have practiced a lot. We've worked really hard. This whole team has been great. All the practice and stuff, it's been great. What are you most looking forward to up in Williamsport? Um, probably just playing with all the fans. I mean, they have a wolf ball field, like all that. The team's flight has already taken off, and everyone has been accounted for and in the sky. Now, Bernie's going to open up their World Series action starting next week, August 15th. That's going to be on a Thursday where they're going to place off against the Mid-Atlantic Regional Champions because Bernie is the Southwest Champions. Now, of course, you can stay updated with everything you need to know for their progress on GMSA and KSAT Sports. I'm Devin Karp, KSAT 12 News. Yes, a lot of excitement right there. I'm so it proud is, of that. That is a great experience for them. Yeah, good luck again to the Bernie Little League baseball team. Mm -hmm. Taking a live look right now at the city. The sun is out and shining. People are up and moving. And you guys are right here with us on Good Morning San Antonio at 9. GMSA at 9, right? <laughs> live <Yes>. right now. <laughs> Yeah, we're excited too, guys, because we have a chance for rain coming up in our forecast, which, uh, <laughs> hey, it's me over there. Hey. Uh, <laughs> I'll see my fellow meteorologist. Hey, yes, it, we have a chance for rain coming up this afternoon and this evening, which is exciting. In the meantime, 99 degrees is our high temperature. That's what we're forecasting today. So maybe a little cooler than the last couple of days, if you want to call it cooler, but a, a degree or two below what we've seen the last couple of days. 104 Del Rio, 103 in Eagle Pass. We're going to see sunny skies for most of the day. That is until late this afternoon and this evening. Forecast heat index today, anywhere from 106 to 107 in a lot of spots. So the humidity will make for that heat index. Uh, to jump up above, you know, 103, 104 uh, for at least a few hours this afternoon. Here's a look at the future cast, and this is what I'm thinking unfolds later today. This is around 5 o'clock. We've got some showers and storms developing north of San Antonio, but if these can put down some outflow boundaries, we'll see some of this activity try to shift maybe a little bit further south towards town. Uh, it's certainly not a guarantee that uh, everyone's going to get rain. In fact, most of us will not. It's only a 20% chance, but this is around 715 does show a few isolated storms here and there. And then as we get into 9, 10 o'clock, still a little bit of isolated activity. But by midnight, most of this goes away and we could even see a strong storm or two. We'll talk more about that potential coming up in just a few minutes. But let's get over to RJ now. The morning commute is winding down, but it does appear we have one issue going on. All right, Justin. Yeah, I have a couple of things on our roads right now. And first of all, yes, uh, good luck to the Bernie Little League team. Last time we had an area team make the Little League World Series was back in 2016. That, would, of course, is the, the OGs, the McAllister Park Little League team, who definitely did some good stuff out there. So good to see Bernie and that area being able to celebrate. As we take a look at 410 right now, this is going to be the North 
northbound lanes at Exchange Parkway. Uh, actually a little bit in the Ingram Park Road area, or Ingram Mall area. So I want to show you our map here real quick. We could get to that and we do see a little bit of a backup here for all of our drivers coming up to Bandera Road that are on 410 right now. So we've had this out here for a little bit. Uh, some time now, still seeing some backups in that area. Also right here, 151 eastbound going into 410. So for all of our drivers coming in from the SeaWorld area, uh, you may run into some backups there, especially in that area. Let's take you to the northeast side right now because we do have a crash being reported at 35 northbound at Thousand Oaks. A little bit uh, as we get close to Randolph Boulevard, also seeing a crash being reported right there at uh, Austin Highway and 35, basically where 35 and 410 uh, meet right there at the middle. So we are seeing some backups for our drivers on the northeast side of town. This is a look at our city map. And again, a lot of activity, 410 right now, 35 at 410, same situation. All right, we do have tax-free weekend uh, this weekend. So some good news, no major construction projects out there on the far northwest side. That means we are not gonna have any major closures out there, 1604 and I-10 over by the rim, UTSA. So, but, but again, stay safe, y'all. If you guys are gonna be on the roads, we're gonna have a lot of people out there because they are gearing up for back to school. But again, no major construction closures this weekend. Stephanie, Jaffney, back to you guys. Awesome news. Thank you, RJ. Here's today's 9 and 9. There will be at least one presidential debate between Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Donald Trump. The two agreeing to face off on ABC on September 10th. Harris says she is open to the idea of having more after seeing if Trump shows up next month. Trump is on the campaign trail for the first time this week with a rally in Montana today, and Harris will be in Arizona. Microsoft says Iran has ramped up attempts to influence the U.S. presidential election by creating fake news outlets targeting liberal and conservative voters. One of the sites allegedly created by Iranian operatives calling former President Donald Trump offensive names, while another describes itself as a trusted source for conservative news in Savannah, Georgia. According to Microsoft, neither site has gained much traction on social media, but that could change as the election draws nearer. Financial aid forms are going to roll out late this year for many college students again. The 2025-2026 free application for federal student aid will be released on October 1st. But that's only for some students. For others, it will roll out by December 1st. The Department of Education says this is so it can test changes that have been made to the form. California Governor Gavin Newsom says that he will start redirecting money from cities and counties that don't show results in reducing homelessness. The announcement comes after the governor issued an executive order in July calling on state agencies to take down homeless encampments and encourage local governments to adopt similar policies. Newsom said some local jurisdictions are not doing enough despite the resources the state has provided. Health officials around the world are sounding the alarm about a deadlier strain of MPOX spreading in Africa. According to the World Health Organization, MPOX, formerly known as monkeypox, has spread from the Democratic Republic of Congo to Kenya, Rwanda, and Uganda. Those countries had not previously reported cases. Health officials are now planning to meet and determine whether the outbreak is a public health emergency of international concern. 2024 is on track to be the hottest year on record, according to the European Union's Copernicus Climate Change Service. Despite a slightly less hot July, two days last month were the hottest since record-keeping started in 1940. Sea surface temperatures also marked the second highest July on record. They were just 0.01 degrees Celsius below 2023 levels. Samsung Electronics issued a new recall for more than 1 million electric stoves in the U.S., saying the model's front-mounted knobs are at risk of unintentional activation by humans or pets. The electronics company, confirming more than 300 reports have been filed by consumers since 2013, including claims of 250 fires that have injured dozens. With fears of a slowdown in demand, drivers could see lower prices at the pump, with crude oil prices down about 8% over the past month and around 14% from its 2024 closing high. But it won't last forever. Experts say the Federal Reserve's expected rate cuts in September could bring barrel costs back up for the fall. Smokey Bear turns 80 today. The beloved fictional bear first appeared on a wildfire prevention poster in August of 1944 and quickly became America's symbol for wildfire prevention. His original message was, 
Care will prevent nine out of 10 forest fires. Now it's a familiar saying of, only you can prevent wildfires. A year long celebration of Smokey Bear's 80th birthday will kick off with an award ceremony honoring wildlife prevention heroes. And that's today's Nine at Nine. And another reminder to you guys, KSAT.com, your one-stop shop for all things back to school. That QR code that you see right there on your screen, get up and scan it right now for the back to school page. Yeah, a lot of schools are going to start school next week, and we're going to be highlighting many of them. So don't forget to wake up with us on Good Morning San Antonio for all of your back to school coverage. That is starting on Monday morning and continuing throughout next week. Mm -hmm. And parents, look at them. Speaking of which, back to school, which means this weekend you need to be in the main and to know about the whole back to school shopping with tax free weekend. That's right. You're going to get more money for your dollar right there if you look at the right places. And people looking to save can take advantage of this year's tax free holiday weekend. Again, starting officially today. Mm -hmm. So, you know, don't wait till Saturday. And our digital journalist, Ivan Adetta, has what you need to know. What are you buying for tax free weekend? Well, my parents are buying me and my sister shoes and like um, clothes. Buy a lot of stuff like clothes, shoes, of course, and um, a little bit of stuff for us too. <laughs> Back to school shopping can get very expensive, especially if you have more than one kid. So today we're here at the outlets to show you what qualifies for back to school tax free weekend starting today all the way through Sunday. The Texas Comptroller's Office says clothes, footwear, school supplies, and backpacks sold for less than $100 qualify for the tax holiday. These items have to be purchased from a store in Texas or an online seller doing business in the state. Here's something you need to know before you buy online. If the qualifying item you're buying is less than $100, but the shipping costs put it over the amount, you will need to pay taxes on it. Remember, the tax exemption only applies to items bought during tax-free weekend. And if you return an item after the fact, you won't be refunded any taxes. Here's some tax-free weekend shopping tips. If parking lots are full in the front, make sure you're checking parking in the back. Uh, make sure you're wearing comfortable shoes. There's lots of stores. We have over 145 stores. Make sure you go to the website, check the deals page, check the store directory, and make sure that you know where those stores are located. All right, that was our Ivan Edetta reporting, and you can find more information on tax-free weekend exemptions on our website. That is kset.com. And Ingram Park Mall will be hosting a tax-free weekend celebration. That starts today. It'll go through Sunday. There's going to be a bounce house that will be on site at Dillard's Court from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. And a back-to-school giveaway while supplies last will be held at J.C. Penney Courtyard from 11 to 6 p.m. Activities for children and family will be all weekend. Tomorrow you can enjoy face painting and a balloon art. Again, this is going to be at Ingram Park Mall. That's located on 6301 Northwest Loop 410. Right now it is 9-11. It's currently 83 degrees outside. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. Well, coming up in our next half hour, the competition is heating up as we get ready for our live noon show today. So a lot of you are heading to the store to grab those last minute school supplies. So Justin and I were out there and we just turned it into a little bit of a competition. <laughs> we're gonna have a preview of that in our next half hour and then be sure to tune in at noon to see who won. And after the break, Sarah Costa joins us in the studio to talk to us about tomato plants. We'll be right back. All right. It may not seem like the most ideal time to start planting your fall gardens. However, as our Sarah Costa says, it is time to get those fall tomatoes started. Mm -hmm. She joins us live for her latest gardening with Kesa. Hey, good morning, Sarah. Good morning. Got you again. I have props. <laughs> it's tomato time, but the biggest challenge we have right now is the heat. Of course, those triple digits, planting anything in them can be deadly to plants. But I show you how to get your fall tomatoes through August and thriving for the fall. Ooh, guys, it is hot out there. That's why I'm in the car filming with the AC. But we need to start thinking about planning for the fall, and it's tomato time, so 
let's go get some. Rainbow Gardens already has the fall tomato transplants in stock, so get them while they last. Since our first average frost is November 30th, our growing season is short. So it's best to buy transplants rather than start from seed. Ooh, okay, since it's still 100 degrees outside, we're not gonna put these in the ground just yet. Here's what we're gonna do instead. We're gonna bump it up to a bigger pot. This is about a gallon size. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna put this in this pot for about a month and it's gonna let the root system grow. This also gives you more control, like being able to put them in morning sun and then physically being able to move your potted tomato plants to the shade. This is how they're gonna survive the brutal August temps. Come September, you should see more of these flowers sprouting or even some more baby tomatoes. That's when it's time to put it in the ground. Place in a spot that gets six to eight hours of sun and water almost daily until established or until the heat cools off. Around Thanksgiving, you should have a harvest like this or even like this. Okay, um, we were talking about, Justin was kind of making fun of my small <laughs> plant. Um, Justin, it's because it's a seedling. It just got started. It even Aww. has tiny tomatoes yes. on it right now. What camera? There we well, go. You're such a good gardener. Aww. I thought well, those tomatoes would be better. Yeah, because it's not <laughs> November <laughs> yet, Justin. Uh, Justin. I know. I didn't you realize it was brand new. Did you yeah. start off this tall? <laughs> uh, no, good good point. Good well, point, you, you just wait. Um, I was telling Jeff. It's going to be like Audrey. Audrey too. The, of the plant giant. that gets little shop of yeah. horrors. It where it eats people. No, um, but they, <laughs> it gets so big. Our tomatoes, if you do this right, get so so big. I mean, once I put this in the ground, it will take over. So I like. I'm very hesitant. I have a love hate relationship mm. with tomatoes. Sometimes mm -hmm. I'm like. No, I don't want to do it. And then I'm like, I do it. And then <laughs> it's going to be as large as this whole desk right. um, come or, November. Or like the okra. Yeah. That, the, that okra, <laughs> the okra is going off still out there. So. Well, I have a stupid question. Do the tomatoes come out like the, the bright red ones you see at the grocery store? Are they like the greenish ones? It's, the it's, little, the, little it's, a, it's a, the variety that you get. So okay. this is a cherry kush. So they're going to be like little red ones. Okay. You can get yellow tomatoes. You can get the big celebrity. They're the big juicy ones. So those will turn red. Yeah, these yeah. will turn red, um, you know, but there's yellow, there's orange, there's different types of varieties. Um, green tomatoes are just tomatoes that are green yeah. that you didn't let, you know, get fully red. Like fried green tomatoes? Right. Cha -cha. That's why you have to fry them so they taste like something. Because oh. you have to let all that sweetness cook. I gotcha. Yeah. Um, but make sure you put them in a pot and then plant in September because Justin, hopefully September, maybe we won't be, it won't be as hot. That's the, that's the idea. You know, we talked yesterday and we think the first front usually comes through mid-September, late September. So that's the hope. And also hopefully get some, we hopefully get some rain with those fronts which will help those tomato plants really flourish. So uh, yes, September, we gotta get through another month though. And as we go outside for you here with our KSAC Connect, it's a cool shot uh, of our downtown. I love, I love looking at San Antonio's downtown. It is beautiful. And uh, this morning, it was quiet. Uh, we didn't have any clouds in the sky, really. We'll see a few more though this afternoon. Val, thank you for sending that in, by the way. And as we look at Futurecast here, we've got a weak frontal boundary. Uh, it's not going to move through, it's not going to cool us down, but what it will do is maybe spark off a couple showers and storms. So by 5 o'clock, we've got some isolated stuff starting to pop. This is going to be generally north of San Antonio at this point. But by the time we get into, say, 6, 7, 8 o'clock, some of this could work a little bit further south. It'll be very isolated, though, so not everyone's going to get rain. In fact, most of us will not get any rain. But a select few, yeah, you may get a downpour, and you could hear some thunder, see some lightning. All of that's possible with this activity tonight. And I think by, say, 11, 12 o'clock, anything that has developed will die down with the loss of daytime heating. There is a risk for some severe weather, believe it or not. It's, it's a low risk. On a scale of 1 to 5, it's 1. Uh, but for those storms that initially develop here around Austin, say between Austin and New Braunfels, they could pack a punch, at least briefly, maybe some winds and can't rule out a little bit of hail. Uh, rain chances as you plan out your evening, if you have dinner plans tonight, there is about a 20% chance between 7 and 11 p.m. Just keep that in mind. Again, not everyone's going to get rain. Uh, as we go outside for you, 83 in San Antonio right now, 85 in New Braunfels, 84 Converse. We've got upper 70s for Bernie and Kerrville. Uh, not a bad morning, but like the last couple of days, these temperatures are really starting to heat up quickly. This is where we end up this afternoon for 
uh, the entire country. And here in San Antonio, we're 99, 100 in Houston, 100 in Abilene. So the heat's still on, despite the fact that front is there. But there has been some cooler air that has worked into parts of the Midwest and the northern tier states. 68 will be the high in Minneapolis today. That sounds fantastic. Uh, we'll get there eventually, uh, but that's not for us. Uh, we have heat alerts, heat advisories in place. Temperatures anywhere from 100 to 104, of course. Uh, the heat index could be as high as 109. Uh, not necessarily for San Antonio, but I think that probably goes for those a little closer to the coast where those uh, heat indices will really soar uh, this afternoon. Okay, extended forecast. So 20% chance today, 99. 99 tomorrow, very small chance for shower or storm. 100 on Sunday, 100 on Monday. I did add in a very small chance of rain on Tuesday. A little area of low pressure comes in from the Gulf. Probably not enough to develop anything significant, but it can't roll out a shower. Otherwise, it is steady as she goes. 100. Mm -hmm. Basically, each and every day. Uh, well, still, as long as like, that little 20%, yeah, that, we'll take that. that. Gives everybody so much happiness in a little bit. And hope. It's something. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you're sitting out on the back porch tonight and maybe you don't get rain, but you see a thunderstorm in the distance, snap a photo of yes. it, send it into our yes. case at Connect so we can at least look at it <laughs> and enjoy it that way. Yeah, and, and enjoy the cloud cover if you get that as well. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we'll take that. Right, thanks, yeah. Justin. thanks, Justin. <laughs> well, time now is 921 and 83 degrees for now. We'll be right back. Well, welcome back. Time now is 924. As investigators look into what happened after a 38-year-old woman left her 15-year-old daughter who has autism near garbage dumpsters. A group that helps families with special needs kids spoke with our John Paul Barajas to let parents out there know that they have their support. It breaks my heart because I can't imagine ever doing that to my child. And I can't imagine what her child was going through in those moments. Victor Rubio and his wife haven't been the same since hearing that a Bandera mother took off after allegedly leaving her child, who has autism, next to a dumpster. Blanter. <laughs> Good job, Victor. <laughs> Victor's son, six-year-old Victor Jr., is on the autism spectrum. Does this guy have a name? Yeah. Oh, thank you. And three-year-old Isaiah has sensory processing disorder. Dad has this message. For Natalie Rose Mino. God loves her daughter. I would have stressed to her that God loves her. And I would have stressed to her that there are resources out there to help. The Rubios it's understand great. how challenging it is for parents with special needs. They rely on the nonprofit Respite Care on a regular basis. The group works with families who have special needs children. Children with special needs are nearly four times more likely than their neurotypical counterparts to end up in a system of care like the foster care system. The nonprofit CEO, Rebecca Helterbrand, says. She doesn't excuse me knows actions, but can imagine she was stressed. Rebecca says that's why respite care exists. We have something called community respite where you can participate in Mother's Day out every Monday, Wednesday, parents night out every Friday, family day out every Saturday, or when school is not in session, a full week out of school time camps that are offered for full days. She explains the group provides the children with fun and educational experiences while also giving parents a moment to themselves. Respite Care also has more resources, all at little to no cost. For Rubio, he's grateful for the help and his family. It's difficult. It puts a strain on both my wife and I. Um, it, it's hard, but what I will say is that with every challenge, there is a reward. For a full list of Respite Care resources, you can go to KSAT.com. Bye-bye! John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Chasing Great resources to have yeah. right there. It is now 927. We're looking at 83 degrees, out, 83 degrees outside. There's a lot more on the way on GMSA at 9. We'll still ahead in your consumer headlines. Ivan Adetta will join us in studio to tell us about your latest recalls, tax-free weekend, and AI concerns. Welcome back. It is 9.30. Well, new in this morning's consumer headlines, BMW is recalling more than 100,000 vehicles. And a new report shows that chat GPT's voice is too realistic for consumers. And also tax-free weekend, the best time to save some cash on some back-to-school. Digital journalist Ivan Herrera is here with more of those stories. Good morning, hey. Ivan. Good morning, guys. Yes, a lot to talk about today, especially with the tax-free weekend. But first, let's talk about BMW. It's recalling over 100,000 vehicles due to an issue with the starter motor. Now, the car part can overheat the motor when drivers try to make repeated attempts to start the vehicles which could be a fire hazard. 
standard. This recall affects 14 models of crossovers and sedans from 2019 and 2020. BMW is notifying owners by mail and you can get your vehicle fixed at the dealership for a free software upgrade. And OpenAI is raising concerns that humans could be too dependent on computers for companionship. The AI organization issued a safety report suggesting that its human sounding voice on ChatGBT is so realistic that some people may develop relationships with a program. ChatGBT has an advanced voice feature that can re respond in real time and can even make adjustments when interrupted. OpenAI says, people were observed expressing shared bonds with ChatGPT. And Tax-Free Weekend is kicking off today all the way through Sunday, and you may be getting out to take advantage of some of those tax savings, but what about other ways to save? Uh, really looking for the vendors that have those coupons. Consider bulk purchases. Um, some parents may uh, work with each other to really uh, be able to share some of those um, items. Some other ways to save include clothes swapping with other parents, hand-me-downs for siblings, or purchasing shoes or clothes from Goodwill. Guys, what are your, some of your saving tips for back to school? Do you guys do anything with, or Stephanie, at least you. Have, <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry, not <laughs> Stephanie. <laughs> Stephanie. Uh, savings, uh, well, I try to um, break down the shopping so okay. that way I don't get the full list, you know, all at one time so that way I have more time to kind of like look through things and not just, you know, just grab. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and take advantage of those coupons. Right now, there's a lot of coupons out there. I went to the outlets earlier and they said that there's a really cool coupon book on their website. So head out to the outlets website and you can actually find a coupon book there for back to school. Yeah, like kind of, a tax free uh, weekend. Yeah, that so is too. And even if you don't have kids, take advantage of it. Yes. It's tax free. Yeah. I'm still kind of freaked out about the chat GPT thing. But yeah. Sounding oh. realistic. Like, yeah. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of fun to play with it, but Ooh, maybe it's getting a little too realistic. Oh, no, yeah. Read me a bedtime story. Like, no. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Thank you. Happy Friday. Thank you. Let's look out there with live cam warming up, you know, slowly. We're at 83 degrees, and I can't really see any clouds in that shot, Justin. Well, there is a shadow there, if you look. Uh, so maybe there's like one cloud that we can't see right there <laughs> over the camera. Uh, we're not going to see much in the way of shade, at least early on. Now, by the afternoon, yes, we'll start to get some clouds developing. Wanted to share with you the pollen count just uh, came in a little while ago, and this is where we stand. Molds jumped up today, moderate at 570. And of note, ragweed shows up for the first time this season, a little early, uh, but it is there. So I want to warn you of that. Uh, if that is something that uh, gets to you allergy wise. Clouds and radar over the last several hours here. There is a weak frontal boundary there that's uh, just off to our north, more or less stationary, uh, but also a little disturbance rotating around that high. That combined with our weak boundary there may give us a few showers and storms this afternoon. So by 3 o'clock, 98, already looking at a feels like number of 105, make it up to 99, and then we start to add in that 20% chance of rain starting at 6 o'clock and going through roughly 10 to 11. So any evening plans, any dinner plans you may have, know that there could be a stray storm. While the chances are low, uh, the chance is there nonetheless. Uh, weekend looking pretty hot. We have some more very, very small rain chances in our seven-day forecast. We'll talk about it for you coming up in just a couple minutes. Thank you, Justin. Looking out there with Transguide. Looking good there at Highway 90 at Nogalitos and also very green. Another green shot there at Highway 90 at Medio Creek. Uh, looking at the TxDOT website, I uh, see there's a crash at I-35 at Thousand Oaks. We don't see these in this camera. And also a crash at I-35 at Weedner. So they look like they are minor. So hopefully maybe they'll clear sometime soon. And there's that normal slowdown you see there at I-10 at Frio with uh, construction there. Well, here's something to think about in November. Do you want San Antonio council members to each get a more than $24,000 raise? Or serve the terms that are twice as long. Those charter amendments will be on the ballot in a few months. City Hall reporter Gary Berenger tells us how that'll work. Motion carries. Six charter amendments right. may be going on to the November 5th ballot, but not everyone on the council agrees on all of them. Motion carries. The most controversial was council pay, which hasn't gone up since 2015 when it was set at about 46 grand for council members and 62 for the mayor. Now, voters will decide whether to raise that to 70 grand for council members and nearly 88 grand for the mayor. 
Future raises would also be tied to the scale that's used in federal housing assistance programs. Supporters say the move would make elected office more accessible. If we keep the salary lower, we might just become a council with only members who are attorneys. Coincidentally, the council's three attorneys were the same three who voted against raising pay. One of them, Councilman Manny Pelias, who's also running for mayor, said council positions are already as close as San Antonio has to royalty. We all get, we all get great parking spaces, folks. We get to pay, park wherever the hell we want to. All of us get invited to every Spurs game and all the, you know, uh, high ticket uh, concerts. Motion carries. There's also a split in whether to go to four year terms instead of two year terms. Though members would still be limited to serving eight years total. I have always been uh, in favor of that because it allows for continuity of um, constituent relationships as well as vision and policy priorities. But some worry that would make it harder to get rid of an unpopular council member. We need to be accountable to the voters every two years. Uh, what we do is too important. The other charter amendments include changes to the Ethics Review Board, allowing city employees to participate in city political campaigns, and reversing the voter-approved cap on city manager's pay and time in office. For today's votes by council only put these issues on to the November 5th ballot. It will be up to San Antonio voters whether any of them actually go into effect. I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. All right, now time now is 937 with 83, 83 degrees outside. If I could say 83 today. It's warming up. It's warming yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> You're watching GMSA at 9. We'll still ahead the latest in gaming news, including some new games coming out next month and some old ones coming back remastered. Let's look out there with Zoo Cam. Flamingos. Yeah, our friends, the <laughs> flamingos on a Friday morning, just yes. walking around there and having a great time. Mm -hmm. and as you know, it is always a great day to go to the zoo. So we have some big news. The San Antonio Zoo has achieved the Newsweek Best Zoo Award as the number three best zoo to visit out of 10 zoos in the country. This is actually the second time in the last two years that the San Antonio Zoo has been recognized as one of the top three zoos in the country. So we got a big congratulations out there to San Antonio Zoo because they had they beat some competition, man. Yeah. We, we got a little list over here and it's just like, wow. I was, yeah, they actually, so a lot of people talk about the San Diego Zoo. They mm -hmm. came in number seven and so San Antonio Zoo is number three. Congrats again. And uh, just if you were wondering, number one, it was North Carolina Zoo. I haven't been there. Yeah. Yeah. And number two was Memphis Zoo. You know, Memphis Zoo is actually right in my neck of the woods because I'm from Arkansas and Memphis was right. That's where we would fly out and all that good oh, stuff. Yeah. I have never, I don't think I've ever been to the Memphis Zoo before, but I have seen how popular it was. Yeah, it might be time to give it a, a visit mm -hmm. with, with, all, with, with this poll now, right? <laughs> yes. Well, we were talking about back to school earlier. And of course, like a lot of people have to get prepared and buy those supplies. And so, uh, you know, this week, Justin and I got to experience that <laughs> ding, ding, firsthand, ding. but like mm -hmm. in super speed mode. Take a look. Ready? Yeah. Go. All right. Ooh. One pencil pouch. Sure. Headphones. Those are not headphones. Here's 24 count. Aha. One half inch binder. Rings. All right, what's going to skip that? That's it? Good luck. You'll do great. I'll need it. You're going to do great. Go. Okay. Uh, all right. Probably come forward. 24, 24, 24. Okay, I got 24. Ooh, red pins. Red pins. So you get, let's see, racers. Uh, green the paper. Paper. Let's see. Where are the headphones? Ah, let me just get the headphones. <laughs> Sharp Expo. I was like, Expo. Time. <laughs> I heard time. I got beat. I think Justin got more. That is awesome. <laughs> I cannot wait to see who took home the trophy. But you could tell it was a, it seemed like it got pretty intense. Well, because it's, <laughs> it's two minutes. Yeah. So actually, so mm. I, I guess to, you know, you know, it was what made it easier is that uh, it was things were, I mean, technically area. easy to find. I mean, mm -hmm. if you're shopping like yeah. like on a normal 
shopping time. I just got stressed. But yeah, <laughs> stressy. Yeah. I was looking down, you know, I knew I had two minutes and I'm like going down the list. Yeah. And, uh, I, I got frazzled. Oh, there yeah. you go. Uh, and Steph showed up in her tennis shoes. I'm not going to tell you how it ended, but. <laughs> she uh, made business, boy. Well. Steph wears heels almost always, and she showed up in her tennis shoes. Just to give you some perspective. Oh, well, God. Priscilla did tell me. I was, I, I, we, we knew we were going to do a back-to-school shoot. I, we didn't really know what it was about. She, and I said, is there anything you want me to bring or, like, you know, preparations for the shoot? Mm -hmm. And she's like, you might want to not wear heels. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. She didn't and tell me that. So. There you go. Well, I knew you were going to show up in heels, well, who Justin. We'll figure it out. You guys start yeah. thinking We'll about find it. out. We'll tell you later. In time. We'll tell you later. Uh, it was a lot of fun, though. And, Steph, you did a great job. You, you did really too, did. Justin. Thank you. Uh, back to school. It is stressful. I will tell you that. I know for the kiddos and for the parents, too. So that's why we're here to help. And hopefully it's going smoothly for you. Tropical weather. What is going on out there? So we have a wave out in the Atlantic starting to show some signs of development. It's not there yet. It's still rather disorganized, but we can see some thunderstorms starting to gather here. And this is the wave that the Hurricane Center thinks will move into a more favorable position for some development. Now a 60% chance. That's an update from what we told you this morning. Uh, went from 50 to 60% chance. So I think there's a pretty good likelihood that this turns into something. Now the latest computer models, I'll tell you, want to take this off to the northwest and then curve it back out into the Atlantic. That's not a for sure thing. That's not a given. Uh, but with these kind of systems, especially as far north as it is, that's often what happens this time of year. We'll see. I still want to watch it. Uh, but at, the, at this moment, there are no signs that this will be moving towards Texas. Uh, if it does get a name, which, which looks like it very well my, might, uh, Ernesto is next in line. Francine, followed by Gordon and Helene and Isaac. We suspect that we'll get through quite a few names this year because it is expected to be a busy year. We're just starting to move into the heart of hurricane season. Uh, so we'll keep you posted there. Outside, this is in Kerrville this morning. Man, that's just, yeah, it just makes you want to like have a cup of coffee on the porch and just uh, soak it all in. Kerrville is such a beautiful spot and that is a great, great shot. Uh, very beautiful uh, in the Texas Hill Country for sure. We appreciate you sending in these pictures. We love seeing the, getting to see what you see where you are. So thank you so much. Outside right now, we do see a few clouds there off in the distance, but not many, not much in the way of natural shade. 83 degrees at the airport, 85 in the Braunfels, 84 in Converse. And these numbers, as they have the last few days, are really starting to work their way up at this point. 92 is what it feels like. That number is only going to get worse in the, in the coming hours. Uh, probably by lunchtime, we've got a feels like temperature of near 100, just to warn you. Uh, so the heat is still there. That hasn't gone away. What changes a little bit today is the fact that we may see some isolated showers and storms. And this is the latest computer model, by the way. And it shows some isolated stuff starting to fire up, say, 3, 4, 5 o'clock. This is all going to be north of San Antonio, I think, a little closer to that boundary. As we head into this evening, though, we may see these storms move a little bit closer. I think it's all going to depend on outflow boundaries and kind of where they set up. Uh, with these kind of models, you can't pay too close attention to the specific location, okay? It just kind of gives you an idea of, of what we're going to see spatially as far as isolated to scattered. And I think in this case, it'll be very isolated. Uh, there will be a few people, though, that do get some downpours and maybe some lightning and thunder, and that's what we're going to watch for. I think this lasts until about 10 o'clock or so, 10 to 11, and then anything after that will probably quickly die down. Uh, so our forecast today, 96 at 2 o'clock. It'll feel like 105 at that point. We're up to 99. Then we start to add in those rain chances right around 6 o'clock, 20%. That's it. Uh, and that 20% chance of rain is going to go through, as I said, around 11 p.m. before we take those rain chances out. And uh, there are heat alerts, heat advisories in effect. Technically, it does include San Antonio, but our temperatures are going to be right on the borderline. We're at 99 today, heat index 105. You get closer to the coast, though, those heat indices are up close to 110. Uh, so that's, that's where the real heat is today. 99 Saturday, 100 Sunday. A lot of triple digits next week, and I did add in a small rain chance on Tuesday, none of which we can get our hopes up about too much, but we're trying to find 
as we pick through the models here, some, some positive news. Yeah. And I think the rain chances this evening for those who see some rain, uh, that's a great thing. Well, you know, back to y'all's face off, I would mm -hmm. love to see what the viewers have to think about it. We should get a mega poll started about who they think. Oh. <laughs> who, who, <laughs> who do they you think, think <laughs> took home the prize? Is it Stephanie or is it Justin? Is it the dad or is the right. mom? I would love to see that. Like, that would be really yeah, fun. Yeah, it, it was, uh, you know, <laughs> it was challenging, but let's let the viewers know what the rules were, though. Yes. So we had two minutes. That's right. why it was stressful. And we did get a list. <laughs> But the problem is if you pick something that happened to not be on the list, you get points deducted. Ooh, so that's why so it was like, was it wasn't like just grab, grab, no. grab everything. It okay. was like grab, grab specific items. Yes. Yeah, so, well, let's hear what you, so you know. You're gonna be on your toes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is now 949 and 83 degrees outside. Well, after the break, we're gonna have the latest in gaming news, including some new games coming out next month. What else will Zelda have to contend with in her grand adventure to save her kingdom? Nintendo has released a new look at The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom. The preview details in-game locations, gameplay, and abilities Zelda will need to use in her quest. The game arrives September 26th for Nintendo Switch. The Force is strong with this one. Originally released in 2002, Star Wars Bounty Hunter has received several enhancements and is playable again on PC, Switch, Xbox, and PlayStation consoles. Welcome to the first gameplay walkthrough for ShipOS 1994. No pandemic supply chain issues here. ShipOS 1994 gives players the ability to run a maritime shipping company complete with a pre-Windows 95 style graphical interface. A demo is now available from the Steam game service with the full experience slated to launch later this year. Leveling up in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Well, Deadpool and Wolverine shattering box office records. Now there's a piece of Deadpool related comic book history that could smash a different record when it goes under the hammer at auction soon. Heritage Auctions is asking $7.5 million for the original R for Deadpool's first comic cover. It was the cover of Marvel's New Mutants number 98, which introduced Deadpool to the world in December of 1990. So if the cover art fetches its asking price, it will break the record for the yeah. priciest piece of original comic book art ever sold. Yeah, so if you got that just laying around, you know, you can you can get that, right? Yeah, a lot of detail there. <laughs> also, looking ahead, we're getting ready for the annual KSAT Pigskin Classic. This year, Bernie will take on Piper, and that's happening Thursday, August 29th at Piper Warrior Coliseum. And let's look out there with Trans Guy this morning and see what we see on the roadways looking over there at Loop 410. Things are moving there. Also there at Loop 410 and Exchange Parkway. Uh, TxDOT didn't have too much. Of course, there's a normal slowdown right there uh, at I-10 at the bridge and I-10 at Provant looks like it's moving. And yeah, actually that's it right now according to the TxDOT website. All right, all you people out there, make way for me. I'm about, I'm about to start my weekend. I'm about to hit the roads. <laughs> yeah. See, clear the road for you. Clear the road. <laughs> I'm going to go the speed limit. I promise. Uh, 99 uh, is what we're forecasting today. There's a 20% chance of a shower or storm uh, later this afternoon or this evening. Very small chance on Saturday. Very small chance on Tuesday. But I think, honestly, if we're going to see any rain, uh, it's going to be tonight. And if you see rain, you're one of the lucky ones. That's just wow. kind of the nature of our situation. It's uh, we still got high pressure kind of close to us, so that keeps everything uh, really in check. But here's for hoping you get rain where you are. Yeah, it rains in your backyard. Yeah, awesome. we hope so. High pressure and high hopes. All right. <laughs> just hoping it'll work go. out. Well, thank you guys for watching us. Got Stephanie going on the road for the yeah. Night. We'll see you at noon.